This is what we were promised, a drone that can follow you down a mountain without crashing. In 2015, the Lilly drone raised $34 million on the strength of this video, which shows a guy just throwing it up in the air and having it follow him down a hill snowboarding. Thing is, it wasn't true. This video wasn't shot with a Lilly drone at all, it turned out, and the technology wasn't capable of following you like that three years ago. That was the vision, but the reality has come pretty close. This is the Skydio R1, a $2,500 drone that can actually follow me around. So let me show you what that looks like with some footage from the Skydio R1 itself. This is one of the very first clips I shot with the Skydio. And it's a little bit tame to start, but this is still not somewhere I'd generally fly a drone. There's a lot of trees overhead. I'm on the sidewalk where I'm not supposed to be riding anyhow. And of course, I'm not controlling the drone at all. It's just letting it follow me. I don't have any way to tell whether it's doing the right thing until I watch the video afterwards. You might notice I'm giving you a nice long clip here just to show you that we're not cherry picking the best moments. The Skydio did all of this itself. And here we go. Underneath the arch, oh god, I love this shot. And you get the cherry blossoms in the view, and it's following me around this apartment complex. Even though I'm, I'm dodging through the trees, I'm under the cherry blossoms. Have you ever seen a shot like this with a drone before? It's not something you typically get. It's not something you typically trust uh, your equipment to do, because it might crash into something. Here was another early test. I've got the Skydio following me a bit, trying to see how its predictive tracking system works. It uses the cameras and a bit of software processing to figure out where you might go. So even if you dodge around behind a tree or something like that, it can figure out where you're likely to be next and follow you. It's also got the ability to climb up way up high if you like, if you want to get a different perspective. It doesn't always have to be right down behind you. This was a speed test I was trying. The Skydio to see if it can catch up with me, if it can follow me when I'm going full speed on the road bike. There's also a lead mode, which I really like. Since it's got cameras front and back, you can have it fly around in front of you. You can wave up at the camera, have it capture all kinds of stunts that way. You might be wondering how this all works. The Skydio has 13 cameras on the top, every corner, and on the bottom, two in each place, so that it can kind of stitch together a map of the world around you a three-dimensional map where it knows where all the obstacles are. It's a technique called SLAM, and it's similar to something that self-driving cars use right now. Oh, yes, the foliage. Okay, so I took this to a park nearby my house so I could see how it could handle dense foliage. And uh, did pretty well. I don't know if I like all the, the blown highlights here. It definitely had some trouble with the bright sun coming down through the trees. I'm still trying to capture the dark regions underneath but it's pretty great, and this is somewhere I would never, ever fly a drone. Normally, you, you trust a drone to come back to you, to try up in the sky. Oh, yes, that's right. Skydio warns that it can't always dodge little, tiny, thin branches like that, and I'll, I'll show you a bit more of that later. I don't know if I really like this shot. I like the blue skies, but it's a little bit dim and gloomy on the ground. I do like that it's got this program where it can orbit around me and kind of get you that 360 without even trying. So it's pretty good at not hitting people, which I like, but it does still startle them. Uh, I got a lot of weird looks with this drone, walking around the street, taking it places that you wouldn't normally take drones. And uh, a couple people gave me the evil eye. And then I've also got an issue here. This is where I discovered, this is the first time I discovered that the drone can't always follow you through all kinds of narrow passageways. At the Jeep, it couldn't follow me past the Jeep. It was a little bit confused. And I think in a sec you're going to see as it rounds the corner, it's not going to follow me here either. It just doesn't know what to do. The cameras, they look left, they look right. They're like, there's not enough space to get through here. And it doesn't follow me. And so you have to come back and get it. So there'll be these times where I couldn't quite trust it to follow me um, through all the things I was doing. If you've got a space that's wide open, you can just, you don't even have to look at it. You can trust it to do its thing most of the time. But if, if there's an obstacle, if there's anywhere where it's like, it's not sure what to do, you might look behind you and realize it's gone. So this is where I really put 
the Skydia through its paces. I found a mountain biker on the mount, up on that tall mountain, Mount Umahum, I think it's called, up in San Jose. And I said, go for it. Let's see if we can follow the Skydio in this mountain path with all this shrubbery. And honestly, it did a pretty damn good job. It has a little trouble if you go too fast, though. The more obstacles in the way, the more chance it's going to get confused and not be able to follow you after you're going really quickly. And this is, oh, OK. So watch this. This is where I really got a little bit concerned. I realized that it wasn't quite what I wanted in a drone yet. This isn't, this is the biggest limitation of the, of the tracking system so far. If it does lose you, it might go around and try to find you again and then hit something. If you're in an area with those thin branches, again, it didn't see those thin branches, hit the obstacle and that was the end of it. Oh yeah, this is a definitely borderline for what the tracking system can do. It was starting to lose track of me there. It was a little bit shaky as I made that transition from dark to light. This time I was able to make it because it still had a good glimpse of me the entire time. So going through, it was able to follow me through the tunnel. The Skydio still got a lot of limitations for a $2,500 drone. It's not something you can just fit into your back pocket, throw up in the air and forget about. And it's not exactly a filmmaker's dream either, since it doesn't have dedicated manual controls. But it is the beginning of the realization of that dream that the Lily drone made us believe in. And I wouldn't be surprised if four or five years from now, every drone has these features. Every drone could theoretically follow you around.